Hi everyone, welcome back to the solo sessions. Today's piece has been written by Matthew Heinsen, who wrote the most brilliant concerto for me last year um, and who has written a very, very special piece for me now. I find it a very emotional piece and um, I think it's absolutely wonderful. It's written in honour of all of the people in the medical profession who have been giving so much to look after the rest of us for the last few months and it's called Heroes. Hi Matthew, how are you? Hi Amy, I'm doing well and yourself? Very well, thank you. Yeah, fine. And um, uh, where are you at the moment? Well, I'm at my place in regional Victoria, mm -hmm. so a long way away from where you are. Mm -hmm. um, and it seems like, I mean, I've been in isolation now pretty much self-imposed isolation for two and a half months in fact i came back from the uk just as everything got shut down so uh yeah it's been a really interesting time but i'm really pleased to be out of the big city i must say it's a it's a different type of experience well thank you for writing this piece i have to say it is just um it's a very emotional piece to play it it just really gets to me every single time I play it. And quite often I've had to wipe away a tear at the end. So um, I, I think it's a very, very special work and I'm really grateful that you've written it. Um, you've called it Heroes. And I think that's about the, the uh, medical professionals that have been giving so much to us. Um, over here in, in the UK, every Thursday night, we stand on our balconies or out the front of our house and bang a pot or clap or cheer or, you know, people in cars toot their horn and we just generally make as much noise as possible. So it feels very nice to be um, doing something slightly more musical to acknowledge their <laughs> what they've done. Um, but I just wonder whether you could, you could tell us a little bit more about, about the piece. Sure, and look, because the term heroes gets bandied about a lot in our society, I mean, often with, with regards to sporting people who have managed to achieve some feat, and I suppose they, they are heroes, but I was thinking in this current situation, I was thinking of what it must be like to be one of those medical professionals, to get up in the morning and just think, you know, is this the day? Is this the day when I might contract the virus? Is this the day when I, I might be on the way out? And just that, not the feeling of dread, but because they are really giving, they're just giving of themselves to help us, to help everybody else. It is entirely selfless as far as I can see. I mean, you wouldn't do it for any other reason. So they may, they may wake up and perhaps feel anxious and um, a little bit, you know, introverted thinking about them, but then they'll get, they'll get through They'll, they'll, they'll go through the day and I imagine that they must really feel a sense of triumph to be at the end of the day. Not only that they've helped so many people, but that they have survived and will go back again to do it again tomorrow. So for me, the essence of being a hero is really sacrificing, potentially sacrificing yourself to help others. They're the real heroes and look in this crisis, the, both the medical professionals and the other people in, in professions that we can't do without. Who, I mean, I'm very lucky because I've been in isolation, I can work from home. But how about all those other people who are doing it so tough, who are not just um, doing it tough in their normal jobs, but who in fact are potentially putting their lives on the line so that the rest of us can not just have a good quality of life, but actually can live and survive to go to do what we do tomorrow and next week and next year and the next decade into the future. They are the real heroes. And so I was really, um, when I was writing the piece, they are the people I had in mind. Amazing. Gosh, well, it means so much to knowing that as well, to, to play it. Um, from a, um, compositional point of view um, when we were first in touch about it we were talking about it maybe following the incredible concerto that you wrote for me last year um, 
uh, if an encore were ever required. <laughs> Which, uh, <laughs> yeah. If you, if you can play it as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, the concerto or the bass. <laughs> well, after, after you played the entire concerto, are you up for an encore? This is a pretty, pretty big piece. <laughs> it's, it's not small. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and so has, it, has this piece been influenced in any way by the thought that it might be an encore for the concerto? Well, in a way, in a way it... It is because um, in the concerto for you, Amy, like in the second move in particular, I was really thinking of your amazing, amazing tone and your ex and incredible phrasing and your extreme musicality uh, at, the, at doing slow music on display, which I really loved when I heard it. I mean, I've known it for a while, but hearing your own music played by you in that regards, um, that was, I think, you know, I was thinking, you know, we know that Amy can do anything, but let's, I want to focus on that. And particularly, I mean, it was that marriage of the idea about having you play it and you, you doing it with, with what you can do combined with, you know, you know it is a hard on the sleeve piece. It's, uh, I don't believe this situation calls for holding back. I think it's all about, this is how I feel. And so I'm really pleased that I had you to express it. <sighs> Well, thank you very, very, very much. Um, it, it is an incredible piece and I'm just so grateful to, to be the one playing it. So thank you, Matthew. Take care. Thank you, Amy. Mm -hmm.